Jeremy Adams shift focus over to I Ray West this issue, building off some of the previous stories he has been doing with the character to finish up her journey to become a hero and discover her own speedster identity. I thoroughly enjoyed the creativeness Adams used when portraying Superman and Jai, who while are both frozen in time and are still fast, aren't faster than the Flashes, but they are still extremely helpful in a fight and both moving slowly ends up really helping out I Ray a lot. Also the idea of a frozen Jai being used as a type of wreck ball by his sister is hilarious. Jay Garrick also gets some spotlight here at the end of the issue, having been captured by the villain's last issue. Adam portrays him as the gruff, older gentleman who survived World War II, so nothing, not even alien torture, phases him. Also, it's a rather great use of his speed powers, with Jay spitting a tooth at super speed into the chest of an alien and killing him, allowing him to escape. So I'm looking forward to a gun-toting Jay going all ham on the villain's next issue. Roger Cruz finally gets an issue that's all action and really shines here, really showing the script's creativeness when it comes to the powers really well. The visual of Jai's frozen body being used as the wrecking ball and him just kind of lazily floating around in the background of shots like a rag doll is just hilarious and great sort of visual gag comedy and I love that sort of stuff in comics. The Flash issue 794 was a fantastic IRA focused issue, finishing up Jeremy Adams' long running character work on her and delivering a satisfying ending to her journey to discover who she is as a hero. I'm going to give this issue a 10 out of 10. The Flash issue 794 finds Ira confronting Miss Murder and her hounds, told by the villain that she can sense her unlocked potential. The villain grabs the girl, telling her that she has already lost, as Jay has been stabbed and her father is dead. As the villain monologues, her hounds sense something in Superman as the Man of Steel slowly moves, grabbing onto their tails. The villain reads Ira's mind, finding it a blur of things that she was told by Jesse and she keeps calling Jai's name. The villain throws her down as her dogs yelp, finding that Jai moved with his powers, falling onto the dogs, and since Superman had hold of their tails, they were ripped clean off. Iray tells Miss Murder that her brother can turn the Speed Force into strength, making him super strong, and it makes it perfect for the move they have been practicing called the Wrecking Ball. Iray throws her frozen brother at the villain and her dogs, smashing them into the wall. Miss Murder escapes down the hall as Iray thanks Superman for the backup. Linda meanwhile grieves over the death of Wally, but Jesse tries to get her to run, but but it's too late as they are cornered by the fraction. Linda wants to fight but Jesse reminds her of the baby as Barry watches Admiral Vell capture Jay, Max, Wallace and Bart. He tries to think about what he can do as the ground begins rumbling beneath him. Vell thinks that it's thunder but Jay tells him that it's his granddaughter as Iray arrives, telling Jai that it's just like the comics said, no one can stand in their way. Iray uses her super powered frozen brother to smash the guards away, freeing her family. She tells the family she's decided what her code name will be, revealing that she wants to be called Thunderheart. Linda and Jesse, meanwhile, are loaded into a transport, learning that the driver is actually the prisoner from before, who is there to free them. Thunderheart, meanwhile, destroys more of the jets as she regroups with Barry, asking where her father is. Barry is forced to tell her that Wally is dead, but he gave them a chance at winning this. She soon sees the Fraction moving back into their base with the unconscious Jay, locking their gates behind them before she and Jaya can get to them. Jesse and the other heroes arrive in the transport and Linda comes to get Iray, who is futilely hitting the wall to try and get into the base and free Jay. Linda hugs her daughter as in the spire, Jay is beaten up by Admiral Vell, who demands he tell him where the hero's base is. Jay doesn't break, knowing last time he was captured, they hit him so hard his molars came out and compared to that, Vell is lightweight. Vell is told that Miss Murder has returned with the coordinates for the base, so the Admiral tells his men to attack it and to kill any who resist, wanting Jay to be left for the Doctor to play with, since they can use him as an organic engine. The heroes meanwhile regroup back at the base, when Barry suddenly gets an idea, speed writing equations all over a whiteboard as Jesse arrives, telling them that the Fraction found Mr. Terrific's lab and they have captured all of their friends who were left there. Barry reveals that to the family that he knows not just how to win the war, but to to make sure it never happened in the first place. Jay meanwhile is introduced to the alien doctor, who thinks that he's in good shape for a man of his age, eager to cut him open and to see what makes him tick. Jay doesn't care, hoping that he can get some dental work done since he thinks the Admiral loosened one of his teeth. He spits a broken tooth at super speed at the alien, killing him as he frees himself from his binds with the alien's laser scalpel. Jay lures in the guard from outside, disarming him and grabbing his gun, figuring it's time for the Fraction to see what Jay Garrick can really do. Thank you. 